Welcome to the lecture series. And today we have Roman Jester, also a faculty member in CalArts. Let's start? And yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> Well, welcome, um, and thanks for showing up. It's very exciting to see you guys here. Um, and thanks to you, so, for inviting me. Um, I gotta admit, it's somewhat intimidating to be in this room because um, I've seen a lot of um, other great designers and artists present their work here. So when So asked me um, to give a lecture, I, I hesitated for a moment because uh, I wasn't sure if that's really... Uh, what I wanted to do. It seemed a bit um, scary. But um, two things re made me realize that it was actually a good idea. One, she asked me last year doing um, class signups, uh, and that was exactly 10 years after I signed up for classes myself, so it seemed a bit uh, serendipitous um, at the anniversary. And uh, I also realized that it was a great opportunity to to pause for a moment and take stock and kind of look back at what I've been doing for the last seven years since I graduated um, and uh, possibly gain some insight for the future. So, let's see if I can get this going. There you go, 2007. Um, <laughs> day of graduation. So I've been out of school for uh, almost seven years, and the first thing that came to mind when I thought, well, what would I be talking about, was uh, this uh, diagram that I did um, in Terry Lee Stone's professional practice class, it was, which was a really excellent class, and it helped a lot. And one of the exercises was, well, look at what you will be doing for the next, or think about what you'll be doing for the next five to uh, ten years. So. Um, I'll get back to this in a second, uh, but I thought it would also be helpful and maybe a little bit of fun um, to go back even further and uh, tell a bit of my life stories and pictures quickly. Uh, so here are my parents uh, when they were 17, and this is how I arrived <laughs> on, on Earth, presumably. At least that's how I found it documented in my photo album. And I grew up in northeast Germany. Um, these are my parents and my older brother, and uh, I guess that's me there in the baby carriage. And uh, that is um, East Germany, as in the socialist communist part of Germany, and North Germany, as in the Baltic Sea. Um, and East Germans uh, do love Native American tales, um, and I love them too, so here I am dressed up as a Native American boy, um, and I don't really understand why my parents <laughs> dressed me up as a Native American girl for Halloween. Um, but I, I, started sailing when I, I started sailing competitively when I was in second grade and did that for eight years. Um, after the wall came down, we got a computer, uh, and I was very interested in coding, and I um, started to... Um, uh, write from computer programs, which eventually led to an interest in graphic design. Uh, I played uh, music in a punk band, uh, and this is us coming back in 10th grade after a class trip in the train. And <laughs> although Germans are fairly liberal when it comes to alcohol, we did get in trouble for this one. <laughs> um, in, when I was 16, I made a pretty momentous decision uh, for my life, and I decided to to go to the United States for one year as an exchange student. This is me leaving in Frankfurt. Uh, here I'm at the Pacific Ocean uh, for the first time <laughs> before I learned uh, the local beach going etiquette. <laughs> um, I lived with a host family in Rancho Cucamonga um, and I went to Rancho Cucamonga High School, not far from here. Uh, and I met a girl in English class, and she is here today, so you kind of know how that turned out. Uh, here we are at the prom. 
Um, and when I returned to Germany, I, you know, we had this long distance relationship, so I recorded long audio letters to uh, send to my girlfriend in California. Uh, and I also taught my family about newfound um, knowledge. So here's me t teaching them how to make tacos for the very first time. <laughs> um, it's quite exciting. Um, I played drums uh, in, a, in a band this time, uh, the drums, and uh, I, um, after I graduated from high school, I briefly uh, worked at a bakery truck and I delivered uh, baked goods to the local villages and old ladies would come with their bag and get their bread. Uh, maybe that's the starting point of my fascination with baking bread, and if you've seen the poster, it's uh, carried <laughs> through. Um, and then. Also, in, instead of doing civ um, military service, which was mandatory back then, I did civil service at a cultural cl um, uh, institution, at a club, and uh, here's me at the entrance, there was a concert that night, and there are two pieces of early graphic design work in this picture. And it's not the poster next to me, because that seems pretty competent, but it's the word art right above me. <laughs> um, so, but then I decided that I wanted to study graphic design and I moved back to California. Um, my girlfriend and I moved into an apartment um, and I started to study uh, design at JV College, at a community college. Uh, here I'm doing some color studies um, and this is the website that I designed for myself when I graduated from JV College. Uh, I was hired in 2001 uh, by my former web design teacher to work for his company in Orange County in Tustin, uh, RhythmNet, and uh, looking back it was a pretty magical time because I was getting to design websites and I was making money and uh, it was actually quite nice, although I felt also deeply unsatisfied and quite antsy during that time. I kind of felt like there must be something else out there. and um, I kind of decided that I wanted to go back to college and get a solid foundation in graphic design. I only had two years of community college up until that point. And my mentor at JV College, Mitchell Syrup, said, you need to go to Calabas. And so I applied and I got in. And uh, <laughs> this is one of the f uh, first pictures taken here. And it describes pretty well my feelings at the time. I was utterly excited and also scared shitless. <laughs> Um, but soon enough, I was working on multiple contrasts for Scott. Mm -hmm. I painted my studio wall a different color each, each year. Um, there was eating cake and drinking wine, the studio. Uh, there was the hiking league, even back then. Uh, I was printing t-shirts for the, for the t-shirt show. Yeah, half the time, I don't think I was able to see. Um, <laughs> Uh, there was ping pong, oh. uh, there was gardening, my friend Caroline O, um, at the CalArts Community Garden, which sadly was demolished a few years ago. Uh, my BFA 4 review, the end of the year show, which I co-organized, um, and then I graduated. Um, and that gets me back to this little diagram that I started out with. Uh, the plan for my life after Calvert. Uh Starting in May 2007 uh, and planning out the next well, about 10 years. Um, and I was putting down stuff that I you know, kind of liked about design, what I wanted to accomplish and what I expected from my job. Uh, for example, I liked being a designer as an editor and I liked to work on collaboration and designing books and magazines, uh, working on websites. Um, and I saw two possible paths going uh, forward. Well, here's actually you know, where I wanted to live, here on the bottom right, you know, Los Angeles, but maybe Portland, Seattle, New York. It seemed like there were all these uh, possibilities. Uh, but really, I narrowed it down to these two things that I uh, saw myself doing, either work at a design studio in Los Angeles uh, or freelance. Um, and I actually pursued the former, and I interviewed for a few places I talked to Adams Morioka and I got very, very close to being hired there. Um, I talked to Bath at Imaginary Forces, even had an interview at Prologue. Uh, but 
um, nothing really worked out on those fronts, and my dream job at the time was actually working at Good Magazine, and I got an interview there, but then also there was some discussion that maybe something, and then it somehow didn't work out. Um, but I did get one big web design job um, that landed in my lap, and I realized that that would probably carry me through financially towards the, uh, through to the end of the year. And I said, well, I'm just going to do that, work on this and see what happens. And I started, uh, at that point, uh, I didn't know it back then, but I guess I started doing what I do now, uh, working independently on my own. Here's my little home office that I um, put together. I think there's my uh, Calais diploma there in the top right corner. Um, and um, this slowly morphed into the design practice that I have today. Um, there was um, there's a bit of a language problem for me. You know, it's like, I guess I do freelance, but that's not really what it is, because freelance seems a bit the term loaded, as in, like, I'm still looking for that great full-time job, and I'm not. Uh, I'm actually quite happy. Uh, but So I'm an independent designer of sorts, uh, or do I have my own design studio, but that seems a bit lofty, because it's really just me. Uh, do I, am I a small business owner? Maybe. That seems kind of stiff. Uh, sometimes I call it my design practice. I still haven't really figured this one out. Um, so, I started designing uh, you know, smallish projects, uh, working on small projects, and they started multiplying. But there was one more thing that I was uh, thinking of doing. Um, after graduating, and that was to teach. Uh, and I had this, um, I guess, I, this is one email that I wrote that I'm, in hindsight, very proud of. I wrote that in January of 2007, and I uh, emailed my former mentor, Mitchell Sayab, who had suggested uh, to go to Calloids and who had taught me at Chafee, and I asked him, hey, what do you think? Can I teach a class at Chafee College? At the time I thought, well, maybe on Saturdays, because I'll be working Monday through Friday, summer. Um, and he said, yeah, uh, and, it, and it worked out. And a few months after I graduated, I was actually in front of a group of students um, teaching an introduction to graphic design class. And um, I'm not going to deny it. This was probably the, one of the most uh, terrifying things I did, uh, stepping in front of a class of, a class of students. Um, uh, but it went really well, and um, this is me at the last day of, of class with a student. And there are political posters in the background that I have my students do. Uh, and somehow um, that started, uh, the teaching started to catapult uh, in a way. Uh, after Ch I started teaching at Chafee, uh, the next semester I started teaching at, at CalArts in the photography department. Then I started teaching at USC because I applied for a teaching job, and a few semesters after that I started teaching at, at Otis. And I sat down and kind of diagrammed uh, my, my classes that I, that I taught over the last few years, and I realized that it's been 35 classes in the last seven years. And you can kind of see in the beginning of 2010, the spring semester, I was teaching five classes um, at the same time, so I was just running around from one place to the next, and uh, it was kind of insane. Um, and I enjoyed it a lot, and I got a lot of out of it, and I met amazing people at all these places, but I realized in the end of 2011 that it wasn't a sustainable way forward, and that there wasn't really a, a career reason to keep doing it. Uh, and I wanted to focus on one place to teach and focus the rest of my energy on my uh, design work. And that's what I've been doing for the last few years. Um, and uh, I'm quite happy doing that. Um, what else, to finish this up, this kind of timeline, 2011, uh, 2010, uh, Yasmin Khan and Aaron Hauber, they asked me to join a mutual uh, shared studio space in Chinatown, and I was ready after working at home for three years uh, to kind of get, do a more official, um, have a more official business address and be with people and meet clients, not at home, but or in a cafe. Uh, so this worked out pretty well for a few years until Skrillex, um, that is a true story, uh, bought the building and uh, delivered this uh, eviction notice. Uh, that is not a true story. 
but um, <laughs> I had to move, and um, we and th this is the uh, diction letter, um, and I had to move, and I found uh, two other uh, amazing designers, Rastan Wu and uh, Colleen Corcoran, uh, and we moved into a studio on Spring Street, uh, Spring Street, where they had already had a studio, and. Also, also uh, <laughs> Tiffany Tran uh, is there uh, all the time, and I don't know why she's wearing my motorcycle helmet sometimes. Um, but so this is now, right? Our studio, um, Tara Johnson and Eileen Levinson also are part-time members, and we all do our own thing. We collaborate, we do collaborate on projects, but it is a shared studio space, and we do, uh, we work on our own uh, projects. So after this, um, this is what I, uh, this is kind of the, the work that I want to talk about. And I broke it out in five different sections. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about a visual si style. Uh, I want to talk about some interventions, collaborations with artists, and then books and websites that I've designed.